Okay, so what we have here is called the Eastern Tent Caterpillar or Forest Tent Caterpillar, depending on where you live. And it's a cocoon basically of live caterpillars, which means it is a cocoon full of live bait. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a tin and put it up on here. And we're going to collect caterpillars just like this. And we'll try to get quite a few of them out of here. There'll be different stages and different sizes of them in this container. So once we have brushed them into our tin and collected them, we can use them for bait. I just put usually some type of a cordage around my tin, put it in my pocket. Now, before I collect them in this tin, I generally put some type of oats or dry cereal in this tin so that they have something to eat while they're in there. I'll show you that up close real quick before we go use these guys to catch some fish. So here's our bait tin. I've just drilled some holes in the top of an Altoids tin. You can see all of our little friends in there. We'll take these guys to the pond and see if we can catch some fish. Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. What we're going to do today is we're going to go out and find some live bait that's very readily available in eastern woodlands, especially in the early spring. We're going to come back to this pond area, this small pond that's probably choked with three to four inch fish. And when you're in a scenario where you're looking for self-reliance or you're eating food over the long term, we're not worried about the six and seven pound bass in the middle of the pond. We want to catch as many of those three and four inch bluegills five feet off the bank that we can get our hands on. I'm gonna show you how to make that real easy today. Stay with me. So we have our small box of worms here or caterpillars that we pulled out of that nest in a tree and we have just a cane pole with a line that we had rolled up on a line winder it's about a little over three quarters of the length of our pole and our pole is about nine feet long i have a bobber or strike indicator about a foot up and one piece of split shot and a small hook what we're going to do is we're going to get our box of caterpillars here that are all sticking together and wriggling around here. We'll get one of those dudes and thread him on the hook just like we would a worm. We're just going to push that hook right around his head area there and push him right up on it. Little buggers are hard to see when they're that small. We're just going to push that and thread that right up the hook, just like that. Let's see what we can do.
Man, oh man, he hit that thing just as soon as that thing hit the water, he was all over it. Goodness gracious. Twisted up my line, made a mess of my action here. Goodness, that is crazy. They cannot stand the worm, fellas. They cannot stand the worm. But I can't get them on the hook, so they must not be very big. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Things are just crazy in there. Tearing this dude up. Telling you what, I get past the little little ones here. Maybe we can find something a little bit bigger. We'll just keep threading them on until we run out of bait. Because they sure ain't shy about hitting it, that's for sure. Look at that, man oh man. Them things are not shy about hitting us, dude. They are all over it. Get back in the water, you. You're swimming the wrong way. Craziness. All right. Let's get a little different spot here. See if maybe the old biggins are out here laying by these logs somewhere, maybe. Holy cow. Man, oh man, he ripped that thing apart. Them things don't even hit the water in there all over it. My goodness. Crazy fish. There must be a blue million little fish in here. Because that thing don't hit the water before they're attacking the bait, the bobber, the sinker. It don't matter what you put in there, they're all over it. I got a sneaking suspicion you can come out here with a fly rod and just destroy these fish. And have a good time doing it. But I'll tell you what, you can probably catch them until you run out of bait because they ain't shy, that's for sure. You got you a little and you're trying to introduce to the outdoors, introduce to fishing? Man, oh man, that's the way to do it right here. Look at that, golly. Man, they just tear that thing up. Just as soon as it hits the water, they are all over it. So when I'm done fishing here, I just take my strike indicator off and lay my line off to the side. Just like I showed in that Tenkara for bushcraft video, I've got that little Lillian up here on the front of this line and it's got a, I just got a piece of 10 pound braid that I'm using here, like a spider wire. It's got a clove hitch on it and that's what attached it to my line. So now when I'm done fishing, or attached it to my lily, excuse me. So now when I'm done fishing, I just take this little line ladder. I put that loop over the line ladder and just wrap that dude up. So I keep my line and my hook and my weight safe. I got it tied up in the grass here in front of me a little bit. And that's easily shoved into a backpack. And then it's not hanging off my pole. And I can just shove it inside of that soft wood to hold that hook in place. I use like cedar and things like that for these line ladders for that reason. Shove that in my backpack or my pocket with my bait box. And then the pole is left with just a lily and braid on the front. And it's easier to carry that than worry about hanging up lines and things like that and going through the woods. Guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me out here today for just a quick episode on finding live bait in eastern woodlands early in the year. Taking a little cane pole and going out and just throwing a line in a little bit. And this is our first On the Water's Edge series video this year and I just kind of wanted to dip a line, see what was going on. 
I'm in an area that's choked with small fish. Very little hope of catching anything big out of here. Unless you took that bigger fish, put it on a bigger limb line or bank line of some kind, maybe caught a turtle. But I doubt there's too many big fish in this hole. So we're going to seek bigger fish elsewhere. And until then, I appreciate your support. I appreciate your views. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for all of our instructors, sponsors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.